Hello and welcome to this Microtasker Shorts video in which I'll be talking about the Microtasker Bare Minimum Loader I'll be showing you how to build the Bare Minimum Loader itself how to build the application which goes with it and then how to check its operation and the compatibility between the loader and the application for this discussion we'll be using a reference project on the KL24 processor this processor has 256 kilobytes of flash for this application we have 4 kilobytes reserved for the bare minimum loader itself then we have a maximum application space of 4 kilobytes following this we have the microtasker parameter system which is optional and then we have a file system which is 210 kilobytes in size we reserve then the upper 42 kilobytes as an intermediate storage place for uploading new applications to. The idea of the bare minimum bootloader is that the application which is presently running can manage the uploading of a new version of itself which is then stored here. The bare minimum loader will then take over the responsibility of safely copying this into the application space and restarting the new application. The first thing I'm going to show is how to build the Microtask bare minimum loader. So I have the project open in Visual Studio and I'm choosing the target for the KL27. I'm using the Cappuccino board which has 256 kilobytes of flash, 32 kilobytes of SRAM. I'm first going to verify that I have the flash memory map set up correctly. Here we have the file system of the bare minimum loader set up to occupy the same space as the upload area. Here we have the start address 35800 in hex and a size of 40 kilobytes. I'm also verifying the correct start address of the application in this file here and at the same time checking the secret key used and the magic number which is going to be used. I've set up to build with GCC so now I can execute. Once the build has successfully completed we can see the output file in this directory here it's called microtaskerboot.bin and that's what we're going to be using to combine with the first application in the next step. We now turn our attention to building the application project. Here again I've select the cappuccino target and in the file system configuration I also have the same memory map as we saw before. Here's the target memory map again as reference. As in the case of the bootloader I choose the target with the GNU build and I rebuild. After the cross compilation is completed the BAT file which is used for the GNU build also does some extra steps. It performs a combination step where it takes the output of the bootloader build and combines it with the output of the application, giving the application an offset of 1000, which is 4 kilobytes. This then creates two files, a binary file and a hex file, which can be used for loading the combined outputs to the board. The next step that it does is takes the output of the application build and converts it into a file called zupload.bin. This has an additional header with the magic number and also a checksum which is calculated by using the secret key. This ensures that the output file contains authentication in its header. On the hard drive I now have outputs from this build. This is the standalone output, the application that could be run by itself. This is the application which is designed to work together with the bare minimum loader. This is the application which can be loaded to the board as a combination of bare minimum loader and the application. And this is the one which can be uploaded via whatever technique is chosen later. One complication that is possible is that the application and the bare minimum loader are not completely set up in a compatible fashion. The reason for this can be fairly difficult to identify. Therefore, I'm now going to show a method where it can be very, very simply checked. What I do is take a copy of the binary file which we want to upload later. And then I locate it into the simulation folder. In this folder, we'll find a file called flashkinetis.h. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to rename this file which I just copied into the same name. 
In the application project and the file application.h, here's an option which can be enabled to help simulation. If I now let the project run in the simulator, I hit this breakpoint and we can do checks on the files. The first check is to verify that the start of the file system is correct. Here we see B800 which corresponds to the expected start location of the application's file system. The next step verifies the location of the file which we're going to upload to. Here we see 35800 Again, that corresponds correctly with the expected location. What the code does now is make a copy of the content at the beginning of the flash, which it will then copy as a file to the upload location. Here we see a file size of 7C1D. We first erase the upload area to be sure that it's blank then we write the new content as a file and then close it. What happened was that this file which we copied into the simulation directory was used as the initial internal flash content which means that now we have a file with the same content but at the location of the intermediate upload. I let the simulation run and I terminate it normally. On termination, the new flash content was saved to this file, so I can have a look at this. I open it up in an hex editor. Here we see initially the content of the file which we primed. This is an upload file. Then if I go down to the location of the intermediate storage space, at the intermediate storage location I find a copy of this file, but with a valid file header. This can then be used for testing the bootloader itself. I take this file and I move into the bootloader directory. And again in the simulation directory I copy it, overwriting the file which was already there. Now I can move to the bootloader project. I've set a breakpoint at the beginning of the bootloader code and I can simply execute the bootloader. Now I can step through this code. The first thing it does is to check whether it has a valid software at the upload location. So I'll go into this routine. It then checks to see the length of any file which it finds. Here we have a length of 7C1E which is what we saw copied to this intermediate location previously. It then extracts the header and in the header in this file we can then see the magic number we can see a checksum and again we can see the code length so the code would verify that these are correct before calculating the checksum the final step of the checksum calculation is to add the secret key which is a method of authentication and then it will check to see whether it's a valid code or not. Here we see it's calculated the checksum of DD26 and it compares this with the checksum in the header and it finds that it's correct. That means that it's accepted this as a valid new software to be loaded. The next step is to erase the original software. We can check that all of the pointers are correct here. Here we can see the correct application start address it's at 1000. We can also verify that we have the correct 40 kilobytes of flash space that will be deleted. The next step is to copy the code to this location. So what happens here is that blocks of the new code are fetched and then they are saved to the new location. This is repeated until the complete length of the file has been copied and then the new code is verified. Here again the code is copied as blocks back. The CRC is calculated on each block. 
It's repeated until the complete length has been tested. And finally we add the secret key. And again verify that the CRC check passes. If all is good, we will then delete the intermediate storage place again. Here we can check that the correct location is being deleted and also the correct file length is being deleted. This would then reset the board. After the simulation is terminated we can then restart again. This time we will see that there's no more intermediate program space occupied and that means that the all of the checks here will fail and the code will directly jump to the application and a final check we can verify the application start address which is 1000 hex as required. Many thanks for watching this video and good luck with your own developments using the Microtasker bare minimum loader.